Hey, good afternoon, everybody. It's time for Stratomatic Baseball. I'm Spokane Steve, or Steve Aquilon. Today, it's going to be the Mets at the Cardinals. April 3rd, 1966, the first of a two-game series. We'll have lefty Tug McGraw starting for the Mets. That's right, he made 12 starts that year. I meant to look up McGraw earlier. Let's do that now while we get ready here. I want to say that might have been his first year. No, it was not. This was his second season in the big leagues. He was 21 years old at this point. He worked at 97 and two-thirds innings in 1965. He was in 15 games this year, 12 as a starter, so mostly a starting pitcher. How about that? And welcome, Ben and Kenyon. Hope your day is going well. And welcome to Gerald, and welcome to Jack. Jack's watching from a uh, sunny and spring-like Long Island. Oh, you don't. Well, my email is statman. Here, I'll just type it in. Statman122 at msn.com. There you go. That is my email address. One of the few old-timers still with an MSN, of course. It's all Outlook now. And they told me you can't even get an MSN address anymore. It's still Microsoft. It's Microsoft Outlook, I guess. Um, McGraw is a starter. <laughs> it's pretty funny. We're sitting at about 48... We had some sun earlier, but it's mostly cloudy now. Possibly some rain this evening. Uh, for the Cardinals, it'll be right-hander Ray Washburn. He had a nice season. 3.76, 26 starts, 170 innings. Let's check and see what they've done in the replay so far. For McGraw, he's been in two games, one start. He's 0-1 with a 4.50. Eight innings of work. Seven hits allowed, six strikeouts. Washburn has made three starts. He's 0-3 with a 7.27, 17 and a third innings. Whoops, and then I lost it, of course. Hang on. There he is, 17 and a third, and 21 hits, 10 strikeouts. There we go. Yeah, Jack, and I'll try to send it to you. I should just be able to attach what uh, what Bob sent to me. I'm not sure. Anyway, I'll give it a try. I'm not making any promises. Like I say, I'm not I'm not very good with uh, computer stuff. I, I get by. And greetings, Mike. Jack, Tug McCraw, mid-60s Philly. The Mets knocked Koufax out in the fourth inning. 1965 in June at Shea Stadium. How about that? I'm really pleased with these stats, guys. This really adds an element to the game. I'm glad I did it. Wish I'd have done it from the beginning, but I caught it pretty soon, so it wasn't too much trouble to get him loaded in there. Let's get you the Mets lineup here, then we'll set the Cardinals defensively. The Mets will have Chuck Hiller leading off today. Ron Hunt getting a day off. He's available to pinch hit. In fact, he did pinch hit in this game in real life. Al Luplo is going to bat second. Ken Boyer in the three spot. Ed Cranepool hits cleanup. Johnny Lewis plays right field today. He'll bat fifth. 
Jim Hickman batting sixth, Roy McMillan seventh, Jerry Grody eighth, and McGraw the pitcher ninth. Setting the Cardinals defensively for you as the Cardinals take the field. Pat Corrales will be catching Washburn. The infield, Phil Gagliano at first. Julian Javier at second. Dal Maxville at short. Charlie Smith at third with an outfield from left to right. Alex Johnson, Kurt Flood, and Lou Brock. And of course, I'm still waiting. I haven't looked ahead or anything, but I'm still waiting for them to move Brock to left field. And put, wait a minute, I'm looking at the wrong team. That's the Mets. Mike Shannon in right. 459 at bats that year. He has not started much. He's a 2E5 minus 2. So Brock in, in right, a 3E20 <laughs> with a plus 1. Like I say, I'd be playing him in left. And I think they will at some point. But I haven't looked ahead. We'll see. So some of the things, lineup selections and whatnot that I question. And sometimes they do it. For example, uh, the Cubs. They had Brown in, le in left field and Billy Williams in right to start the season. And this went on for a couple weeks. And I kept thinking, why don't they switch him? Put the better arm in right field. And sure enough, DeRocher did. He moved Billy Williams to left where he would play the rest of the season. And Byron Brown moved over to right. So I kind of expect the same thing to happen with these Cardinals. Mets come in 3-9. and nine. The Cardinals with an 8-9 and nine record. Mets had a lot of rainouts earlier. There are 12 games played by far the fewest so far. And we're ready to work. Washburn's ready to go. Chuck Hiller steps in. Boy, that's true, Jack. Look what they gave up for Jim Fregosi. Then they basically gave Amos Otis to the Royals. Two I remember off the top of my head. Boy, that Brock trade just might have been, Kenyon. It ranks right up there, that's for sure. Okay, here's Washburn. Now the right-hander's ready. Hiller standing in from the left side. Chuck Hiller hasn't played much this year. He's only been in five ball games. He's 0 for 4 with a walk. Washburn into the one. That's going to be a 2-7. Base hit up the middle. Chuck Hiller. His first start of the season, and he responds with a leadoff single. Hiller not a threat to run. In fact, if you look up and down the running ratings of this Met lineup, really nobody ran. And here's Al Luplo. Luplo, left-handed batter. He's hitting 318. That's 7 for 22. He's been in eight games. One home run, two RBIs. Washburn now from the stretch. Here's the pitch to Luplo. 1-8 right-handed, a single to two on an 11. That liner snared by Gagliano. One away, line drive to first, caught by Gagliano. <laughs> That's right, Ben. Oh, and Jack, yeah, the Mets got Grody for Tom Parsons. That was a good trade. Grody, as you guys probably know by now, a favorite of mine as a youngster. And here's Ken Boyer now. Boyer, just 216, one home run, seven RBIs. And here's something really sad. His seven RBIs leads the ball club. In fact, neither of these teams, well, the card, I shouldn't say that. The Cardinals are batting 263 as a team. The Mets come into the game with a 223 team average and only five home runs. So to say they are offensively challenged would be an understatement. One away, man on first. Here's Boyer now, right on right. That's going to be a 4-7 right-handed. That's a base hit just past the outstretched glove of Maxville. Johnson backs it up quickly. Hiller will hold it second. And the Mets have something going in the first. First and second, one away. And here's Cranepool. Cranepool, left-handed batter. He comes in batting just 190, one home run, four RBIs. 
Washburn in a bit of a jam here at the top of the first. Working from the stretch, here's the pitch to Crane Pool. On a 4 4, it's a grounder to third base X. That's going to be Smith, a 3 E18. Could be two. Here's the play. On a 10 E rating, that's a 7 on an 18. And it's Smith to Javier to Gagliano. Double play. Nice play, Smith. And that will retire the side. 5 4 3 X, and that'll do her. No runs, two hits, one left. And the Mets looked like they were going to get something going in the top of the first, but Crane Pool bounced into the double play in the inning. And here's McGraw now. The left-handed screwball artist will be facing Lou Brock to lead things off. Brock comes into the season... I'm sorry, into the series, <laughs> into the season. At 247, one home run, nine RBIs. Batting left-handed, left on left here. McGraw gets the sign from Grody. There's the pitch to Brock. It's a 5-5 left-handed. That's going to be a high fly ball to deep right field. Lewis going back to the track. It's gone. Holy cow, Brock has the power. And Lou Brock has just put the Cardinals out in front with a leadoff home run. Holy cow. Let's look at that again. 5-5. Five, five, in homer to 16. Left on left. He has the power. And Brock hits his second home run of the year. It's one to nothing, St. Louis. Absolutely, Mike. Yeah, we were just talking about that. He had quite a few starts the previous year, too, 1965, his rookie year. Second season here for the 21-year-old Tug McGraw. It seems like that guy pitched forever, doesn't it? Here's Alex Johnson now. He comes in at 279, three home runs, and 10 RBIs. Both of those numbers lead the ball club. McGraw into the white. 2-9 left-handed. He struck him out. Scroogey, the bottom fell out of it. And Johnson swings over the top, one down. And here's Kurt Flood. Flood hitting just 159, one homer, five RBIs. Much better card than that. We looked for Flood to get going a little bit here. McGraw into the windup. 4 9 right handed is a fly into right field. That's playable for Lewis. He's under it now, and there's two away. And that'll bring up Charlie Smith with two down. Smith comes in at 343. One home run, five RBIs. McGraw gets the sign now. Here's the wind up on the pitch. 1 9 against the lefty. Swung on and missed strike three. McGraw fans two in the first. Lead off homer by Brock. No one left on. And we're through an inning. It is St. Louis 1, New York nothing. Just getting underway here, folks. Pour yourself something to drink and find a comfortable location and hang out with me for about an hour. I do appreciate the company. About all the company I get anymore other than the Saturday visit to my mom and sister's house. And hey, I'm not complaining, believe me. Fine company indeed. Bottom of the, excuse me, top of the second we go. Washburn ready to work now, just Johnny Lewis steps in. Lewis comes in at just 136, three for 22, two RBIs. And Ben says he can only do this week with a 1 p.m. Pacific start. He works until... 3 Central, so that would be, what, 2 my time? 
Well, I don't know. I'd be open to moving to two, I suppose. I had several guys, I used to do, I used to go at two, in fact, Ben. I had several guys asking me, saying they preferred the 1 p.m. start. So, yeah, thinking it out now like that, I'll probably stick with the one since I had requests for it. Washburn ready to work to Lewis now. Here's the pitch. That's a 6-11 left-handed base hit into right field. That's a leadoff single for Johnny Lewis. Let's check the battery here. Well, with only a three chance of getting the lead, you know I'm not going to try that. What that basically means is he has almost as much chance of being picked off as he does of getting the good lead. It's not a good idea. I hear that, Kenyon. I actually kidded somebody uh, that I was thinking about moving to Arizona just so I don't have to do it. <laughs> Yeah. I lived there once, though, and left. I didn't stay very long. So you could say I didn't give it a fair shake. That would be fair. Of course, I was 26 years old then, too. Didn't like the heat. I think I might welcome it now more in my uh, retirement years. Or to put it another way, I can see why retired folks move to warm climates. Here's Jim Hickman now. Hickman playing... Oh, I forgot to give you the... Uh, the Mets defensively on the Cardinal lineup, didn't I? Damn, I'm blowing it. <laughs> it's Brock Johnson Flood, Smith Gagliano, Javier, Maxville Corrales Washburn. The reason it made me think of it is because Hickman's playing center field today, and that always makes me shake my head a little bit. I, am, I remember Jim Hickman very well, and I cannot picture that man playing center field. That's true, Ben. Yeah, I noticed that when I was writing it in. Let's get your outfielders up front there, Shane Deanst. Man on first. Washburn will work from the stretch now. Here's the pitch to Hickman. That's a 3-6 right-handed ball four. He loses him. And the Mets once again have two men on. First and second, nobody out. And here comes McMillan. Roy McMillan, the shortstop, comes in at just 205. One home run, four RBIs. And you're saying, how did he get the home run? See, he's a, he's a W both ways. Doesn't have one against lefties. Right there it is. Three, nine, one through seven. That's the only roll possible or he could have hit that home run. Washburn from the stretch. Hits to McMillan. That's going to be a 1-6. Grounder to third. That's Smith. Down to Javier, and that's all. So the force play. Lewis will take third on that. Hickman is forced. McMillan safe at first. Runners at the corners, one down, and here he is, Jerry Grody. Grody's hitting 238 on the season. No homers, five RBIs. Let's see. One out runners at the corners. They'll be back. Double play depth here. Washburn ready to work to Grody from the stretch. That's going to be a 1-6. Single to nine on a two. That's down for a base hit. It's an RBI single by Jerry Grody. And we got a tie ball game. Lewis comes in to score. McMillan will hold at second. One one and welcome sports time machine. Good afternoon to you, sir. Here's McGraw. He's a right-handed batter, three W. With one out, he's going to swing away. Possibly a bunning situation. Let's take a look at Hiller. What is McGraw to bunt? No, I think about this. He's a B. You know what? He is going to lay it down. McGraw to lay it down. That's going to be a 7B. Successful sacrifice bunt by Tug McGraw. That moves the runners over. McMillan to third, Grody to second. 
and Hiller will try to pick him up. Washburn trying to get out of the inning with just the lone run. It's one to one here in the top of the second. Washburn studying the signs now. Here's the pitch to Hiller. 6-6, six, six, fly ball to center field. It's playable for Flood. He's right there to make the catch to retire the side. So the Mets get a run on two hits. They leave a pair. And we got a tie ball game after one and a half. As McGraw takes his warm-ups, the Mets defensively, of course, Grody catching him. Crane Poole at first, Hiller at second, McMillan at short, Boyer at third with the outfield left to right of Luplo, Hickman, and Lewis. He might, Kenny, and that would be his second. I wouldn't want to bet on it, <laughs> but anything's possible. Gagliano, Javier, and Maxville do for St. Louis. Gagliano has not played much. He's been in six games. He's 0 for 11. So he's looking for his first hit of the season as he stands in from the right side. McGraw gets the sign from Grody. Pitch to Gagliano, a 5A to grounder to second base X. That's going to be Hiller, a 4E17. Hiller to his right. There's the roll on the play. That is not flat. That's going to be a re-roll on the 20. It's a 7. And Hiller makes a fine play and throws him out. How about that? So 4-3-X, Gagliano retired, still looking for his first hit. And here's Javier now. Slick fielding second baseman. Comes in hitting just 1-57. 11 for 70. No home runs, 3 RBIs. McGraw into the windup. It's going to be a 5-10 right-handed. That's catcher's card X. That's going to be Grody. Fine defensive catcher, as always. A 2-E-8. And here's the play on an 18. It'll be a foul ball. Caught by Grody for the second out of the inning. Two away, and here's Dal Maxville, the shortstop. Maxfield comes in at 269, no homers, four RBIs. He does have two triples. As McGraw goes into the windup, that's going to be a 510 right handed, same number. Catcher's card, Grody, a 2E8. Let's do it again. On a 10 E rating, the roll of a 10 on an 8, it's a little number in front of the plate, ground ball, Grody on it like a cat. Throws him out, and that'll do it. So 2-3-X. 3-X plays, 1-2-3 go the Cardinals. We're through two in a 1-1 one, one tie. It's amazing how many of these 66 games are pitchers' duels, or at least start out that way. Sometimes all hell breaks loose in the middle slash late innings. And hell yeah, man. I, the pitchers I'm not so concerned about, but a good defensive catcher can make a lot of difference, especially when you get into the windows game where you have the blocking the plate rule A lot of stuff like that. It, the catcher's defense seems to, they've made it come into play more with the maximum rules. Some of those rules are what they call black box rules that don't really apply or would not be able to translate to card and dice. Anyway, some thoughts on that. The Mets come to bat in the third. Washburn will be facing Luplo, Boyer, and Crane Pool. Luplo, line to first base, his first time up today. Washburn into the one. 5 11 left handed. That's going to be a high fly ball to deep right field. Back goes Brock at the track, jumps up and makes the catch at the wall. Holy crap, would you look at that? 
Luplo had the power, almost gets it out of here. But as it is, it's just allowed out to Brock. And here's Boyer now. Boyer singled his first time up. Boyer was a good ball player. Actually, all of the Boyers were. I believe there were six brothers, and they all played baseball. I think some of them played just at the minor leagues, never quite made it to the bigs. Cleet, of course, the longtime Yankee. And they could play all over the infield, too. So here's Boyer. Washburn gets his sign. And here's the pitch. It's a 2-5. It's a tapper to short. Maxville charging it on the run. Throws him out. And there's two down. Two away. Nobody on. Ed Cranepool comes to bat. Cranepool, of course, killed the rally of the first by grounding into the 5-4-3 double play. Washburn into the windup now. The pitch to Cranepool. 2-7 right-handed. Fly to center field. Flood's going to make the play right in Cranepool's good column. Flood puts it away, and it's a 1-2-3 inning for Washburn. So the Mets down in order in the third. Tug McGraw getting loose for the bottom of the inning. It'll be Corrales, Washburn, and Brock for St. Louis. Corrales comes in just 200. He's only played in four ball games. He's three for 15. And here's the windup and pitch from McGraw. 1-7 to the left-hander. Struck him out. Third K of the game for McGraw. All three on the batter's card. And here's Washburn now. Washburn could handle the bat a bit. Right-handed batter. He's a six with end power. McGraw into the windup now. On a 1-4 fly ball to center field, Hickman under it, makes the catch two away. And here's Brock. Brock, of course, homered to lead off for the Cardinals in the bottom of the first. McGraw left on left now. Here's the pitch to Brock. 4-9 left-handed, fly ball to left field. Brock goes the other way with it. Luplo back a few steps and makes the catch. 1-2-3 inning for Tug McGraw. And we're through three in a 1-1 one -one tie. And Kenyon wonders why Ken Boyer thought about playing against the Cardinals after all those years with St. Louis. Well, how did that come to transpire would be my first question. I mean, in those days, if you were traded, you couldn't really do anything about it. <laughs> yeah, these players were indentured servants. Unless you were Kurt Flood, of course. <laughs> That took some guts to do what Flood did, I'll tell you that. It'll be Lewis, Hickman, and McMillan as we move to the fourth inning. Johnny Lewis singled and scored his first time up. Washburn gets the sign from Corrales now. That's going to be a 3-2 right-handed ball four. He walks him. So Lewis has been on both times today. And here's Hickman. Hickman walked his first time up back in the second. Hickman came into the game. Where is Hickman? Oh, just 194. Six for 31. One homer, four RBIs. Washburn working from the stretch. To Hickman. That's going to be a 6-10 right-handed. Swung on and missed strike three. So Washburn fans Hickman. And here's McMillan. 
And greetings, Rick. Yes, sir. And of course, let's not forget uh, Marvin Miller, Andy Messersmith, and Dave McNally. Played a big part in that as well. Roy McMillan now, man on first, one down. Washburn from the stretch. To McMillan, a 1-6, grounder to third base. That's Smith. He throws it down to Javier to first, not in time. That's going to be a force play. Lewis is forced with two down. McMillan will be standing at first base as Jerry Grody comes to bat. Grody with an RBI single his first time up, accounting for the Mets' only run so far. Eleven-time All-Star. Thank you, Kenyon. I was hoping someone would look that up. Hint, hint. <laughs> Al Jackson and Charlie Smith. Wow. What year was that? I'll throw that in there, too. Here's Grody. Washburn from the stretch. It's a 4-5 right-hander to fly ball into right field. Brock drifting over now. And makes the catch to retire the side. So no runs, no hits, a man left. And we're still in a 1-1 deadlock here as we go to the bottom of the fourth. 1965, so the year before this particular year. Yeah, early on... In the replay, in fact, I think it was before I even started the 66 replay. I was doing the 74 Dodger replay. And someone brought up the Boyers, and I looked up the brothers. Unfortunately, I don't remember much about it, but six brothers, they all played ball. Pretty incredible. Alex Johnson will start it off for St. Louis in the bottom of the fourth. Flood and Smith to follow. Johnson struck out his first time up. Now McGraw with the windup and the pitch. It's going to be a 5-6 right-handed. Pops him up. Left side. McMillan calling. One away. Here's Flood now. Woe for one. Flew to right. McGraw gets the sign from Grody. Here's the pitch. That's going to be a 4-8 right-handed. Ripped into the left center gap. That's going to roll to the wall. Flood rounding. Hickman gathers it up, and Flood is in with a stand-up double. So a one-out double for Kurt Flood here. Go ahead run in scoring position, and here's Charlie Smith. Smith struck out his first time up. McGraw staring in. The windup. The pitch to Smith. 6-6 six, six righty. Swung on and missed strike three. McGraw's fourth K of the ball game. Down goes Smith. And it will be up to Gagliano. Gagliano again. 0 for 1. What did I say he came in at? 0 for 11. He's 0 for 12 on the season. Still looking for that elusive first hit. McGraw the windup. Here's the pitch. It's a 3-6. He walks in. Ball four. Looking at the numbers, has he walked already? Yes, he had two walks. So that's his third walk. So he doesn't have a hit yet, but he has walked three times. And it'll be up to Javier. Javier fouled out to the catcher. First and second, two down. McGraw trying to get out of this now. From the stretch... Pitch to Julian, a 1-4 in his good column, but it's going to be a fly ball to left, and Luplo's right there to retire the side. How about that? No runs, a hit, two left on. We've completed four here in St. Louis. It's a 1-1 tie. Yes, Rick, I remember that Vester Smith thing. And remember he held out so long that he injured himself. When he came back, was it May? I don't think he pitched in April. He might have. 
But, but the essential point is he didn't go to spring training. No one would let him go to spring training, of course. The owners were trying to box these guys out. McNally was near the end of the line at that point, so he didn't really care. But I kind of think it ruined Messersmith's career. Washburn gets ready to go to work in the fifth. It's going to be McGraw to lead it off. And Boyer died from cancer at 51 years young. Wow, what a shame. Very, very young. I remember when I was a kid, I thought 51 was old. It's funny how our uh, <laughs> perception changes with time. Oh, he was a marvelous pitcher. There was a story, uh, he wasn't as well known with the Angels as, say, Jim Palmer, Lolich, some of those guys. But in 1973, in the offseason, Al Campanis of Los Angeles sat down with Billy Martin and somebody else, and they were sitting at a table, and Campanis asked those two guys, who's the best pitcher in the American League right now? And they both said, Andy Messersmith. Shortly after that, Campanis engineered the trade with the Angels and brought Andy Messersmith to the Dodgers. So here's McGraw now, right-handed hitter. The pitch from Washburn is a 5-8. Tapper to short. Maxville has it. Over to Gagliano. One away. Top of the order, Chuck Hiller. Hiller one for two today. Washburn gets his sign from Corrales now. Here's the pitch to Hiller. 5-6 left-handed, swung on and missed, strike three. And just the second K of the game for Washburn. Two down quickly, and here's Luplo. Luplo 0 for 2 so far. And here's the pitch to Luplo. That's going to be a 2-6 right-handed. Pops him up on the right side, Javier. And that's going to do it. One, two, three inning for Washburn. After four and a half, still a 1-1 ball game. Sports Time Machine playing a 12-team All-World Series teams. 66-game schedule on my channel. I have played 05 Chicago, and then I can't read the rest of it, versus 12... Giants last night versus 12 Giants. Oh, okay, I got you. So that would be the... Which Cubs would that be? The 1905 Cubs? The 12 Giants, I remember, had Lincecum. He had a nasty card. Last night it was 78 Yanks and 68 Tigers. I'm very familiar with those clubs. And you might remember it was the 68 World Series that really hooked me as a kid on baseball as a whole. We go to the bottom of the fifth. McGraw ready to work. It's the bottom of the order for St. Louis. It's going to be Maxville. Corrales and Washburn. Maxville grounded out to catcher his first time up. McGraw into the windup. Here's the pitch to Maxville now. It's a 6-9 left-handed. Sorry, 6-9 right-handed. Grounder to shortstop X. That's going to be McMillan. McMillan, a 3-E-20. As he ranges into the hole, here's the roll on the play. It's an 18. He's got it. Plants and throws in time. One away. 
63X, Maxville retired by his opposite number. And here's Pat Corrales. Corrales struck out his first time up. McGraw only an S5 for endurance, so he's in his first inning of potential fatigue. Washburn is a 7. McGraw the windup. Corrales, a 5-10 right-handed. Catcher's card X. Third time he's rolled that today. That's Grody. A 2-E8. Here's the play. On a 7, it's a pop-out to the catcher. Nice play, Grody. Two down quickly, and here's Washburn. Washburn flew to center his first time up. The lefty delivers 2-6, swung on, and missed strike three. And it's a 1-2-3 inning for Tug McGraw. We're through five in St. Louis in a 1-1 ball game. Another great pitcher's duel. How about that? Seems almost too good to be true. Of course, I'm a big believer in the old saying, if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. <laughs> Maybe that doesn't apply to Stratomatic, though. Oh, yeah, the 84 Tigers. That team, through the first two months of the season, you could see they were domin the, the dominant team in the major leagues that year. If I'd have had any sense at that point in late May, I'd have just put a bundle on them to go all the way. That was back when I was betting. Hindsight 2020, of course. Boyer will lead it off for the Mets here in the sixth. He's one for two today. Washburn gets his sign. Five eleven, right-handed. That's a base hit into right field. Boyer reaches out and strokes it the other way for his second hit of the ball game. Yes, sir, 35 and 5. They just blew doors right out of the gate. And Ben, you're not the only one. I lost about $350 on that Cubs Padres series. <laughs> I remember it well. In fact, I quit doing it for a while after that. That cured me for about five, six years. I don't do it anymore. Here's Crane Pool 0 for 2. Man on first, nobody down. Washburn now working from the stretch. The pitch to, pitch to Ed is a 5 10 left handed catcher's card X. This is going to be Corrales this time, a 2 E 12. And here's the play. On a 15, that's going to be a pass ball and foul out. So Boyer will take second on the pass ball. I'll write that in. Pass ball Corrales. Corrales, who went on to be a manager. Runner in scoring position, one away, and here's Johnny Lewis. Lewis has been on base, base both times today, singled and walked. Washburn gets his sign now. Can't hang on to the dice. Here's the pitch to Lewis. It's a two six right handed swung on and missed strike three. And a timely strikeout by Washburn, and there's two away. And it'll be up to Jim Hickman. 0 for 1 with a walk, struck out his last time up. And here's the pitch to Hickman. 5-5, five, five, swung on and missed strike three. So Washburn with a runner in scoring position, fans two. That'll retire the side. No runs to hit one left. 
And what a duel we have here between Washburn and McGraw. Rick, you're not the only one. And they, they, the Cubs had it. Oh, my God. They had Lee Smith on the mound. All he had to do was get Steve Garvey out, right? And he didn't. <laughs> Garvey hit it over the fence. I think that was game four, not the deciding game. But then when they lost that one with Sutcliffe, who Sutcliffe was like 16 and 1 that year or something. 14 and 1, 15 and 1, 16 and 1, something like that. So I doubled up my bet on the Cubs. Sutcliffe's only lost one game all year. He can't possibly lose. Top of the order for St. Louis as we move to the bottom of the sixth. Dick Selma begins tossing lightly in the net pin. They're not expecting McGraw to go deep, but he's only allowed two hits to this point. Getting the sign from Grody now. Here's the windup. Here's the pitch to Brock. 5-6 left-handed. Swung on and missed strike three. Down goes Brock. Brock, whose home run is accounted for the lone cardinal run way back in the first inning. And here's Alex Johnson now. A.J. 0 for 2. McGraw, the line the pitch. That's a 3-6 left-handed. Tapper down to third base. Boyer on it. Throws across in time. Two out in the sixth, and here's Kurt Flood. One for two with a double. Doubled in the fourth and was stranded there. McGraw the windup. The pitch to Flood. 2-12 left-handed. Deep fly ball to left. Backing up is Luplo, just shy of the track. He puts it away. And it's another 1-2-3 inning from McGraw. Tug has retired seven in a row now. Through six innings complete, it's a 1-1 ball game. Boy, you said a mouthful there, Kenyon. And there's always hope in baseball, unlike other sports. I mean, you can't, you know, you can't run out the clock in baseball. You get your 27 outs. Before we go to the seventh, I'm going to refill my cup. This will only take a second. It's right here. <clears throat> there we go, as promised. We are back quickly. Here we go to the seventh inning in a 1-1 tie as the tension mounts. Oh, yeah. The Keith Hernandez, Mookie, Ray Knight, Gary Carter mounts against the Mustache Gang on Sports Time Machine's channel tonight. So is that a set of games? Like a series or just one game? It's like a full schedule, right? I've never seen this before. Right on my screen, I'm looking at the, uh, the feed, the YouTube feed, and it just pops up as this flash announcement, rain coming. That's weird. I've never noticed that before. Bottom of the order for the Mets, it's McMillan, Grody, and the pitcher's spot. Would they let McGraw hit? Washburn into the windup. Here's the pitch to McMillan. That's going to be a 4-11 right-handed. Ball four, he loses him. McMillan leads off with a walk. And here's Grody, one for two today. Washburn in his first inning now, potential fatigue.
Joe Horner begins tossing lightly in the St. Louis pen. Right on right, Washburn from the stretch. Christopher Grody is a 2-7. Struck him out. Big strikeout, and now, oh my goodness. Now we've got a big decision to make. You've got a five endurance starter who's already gone six. That would lean towards pinch hitting for him here. On the other hand, he's only given up two hits, and I, I, I can't do it. I've got to see where this goes with McGraw. McGraw, B. Bunner is going to lay it down. That's going to be a 9B. And it's a successful sacrifice bunt. Second one of the game for Tug. McMillan moves into scoring position. And once again, it will be up to Chuck Hiller. Hiller one for three. In a similar situation, in the second inning, he flew out to center. Washburn gets the sign now. The full windup and pitch to Chuck Hill. 2-12 right-handed. Base hit into right field. That's an open single. McMillan can try to come in on that. Brock a plus one. McMillan a 10 with two outs. 12 with Brock's one. 13. He's coming. We're sending him. Brock hits the cutoff. Man, Javier. Here's the throw. And he's in there on a 12. Oh, my goodness. How about that for excitement? Hiller, 11, would have been 6-7. Hill, he will not advance. But an RBI single, Chuck Hiller comes through big in the seventh inning, and it's 2-1 New York. Oh, you could say that again, Ben. Yeah, most of these guys know that by now. Always a fan of pitching. In fact, sometimes nowadays when I'm watching a game and I don't have a strong rooting interest on either side, I'm rooting for the pitchers on both sides. <laughs> Let's check Hiller's running. He's at first with two down. Not a threat to steal, but he doesn't even have a steal rating. A 1 through 11 runner. And here's Luplo. Luplo's 0 for 3. One more hit or walk will fatigue uh, Washburn. Here's the pitch to Luplo. It's a 5-8 single to 2. But on a 15, that's going to be handled by Gagliano, who will take it to the bag. And that will do it. But one run, one hit, they left one. And the Mets take a 2-1 to one lead. To the bottom of the inning. Let's check the defense now. This might be a good time to get Hunt in the end. I can't do that. I can't take Hiller out. He's the hero so far. Yeah, I get emotional with these things. Sentimental, emotional, whatever you want to call it. Sometimes I know what the, what the percentage move is. And I just can't do it. Percentage move there was to pinch hit for McGraw, obviously. Well, he's got the lead. Let's see what he does with it. Smith, Gagliano, and Javier coming up for St. Louis. Selma's joined by Dennis Ryband in the Met pen. And here is Charlie Smith, struck out twice so far against Tug. Oh, thank you, Sports Time Machine, for the explanation. Everyone plays a three-game set and plays everyone six times, three home, three away. That seems like a good system to me.
McGraw into the windup. Here's the pitch to Charlie Smith. It's a 4-4 right-handed grounder to third base X. That's going to be Boyer, a 2-E26. Boyer ranging to his left. Here's the roll on the play. It's going to be the E rating, an 8 on a 26. He makes the stab up and throws him out. Fine play, Boyer. One down. So 5-3-X, Smith is retired. And here's Gagliano still looking for his first hit of the season. He's 0 for 1 with a walk today. McGraw into the windup. Pitch to Gagliano, 2-6 left-handed, and he walks again. So Gagliano walks for the second time. Not a threat to run, especially with McGraw's minus three, Grody's minus one. He'd be a nine even if he got the lead. So here's Javier now, 0 for 2. Gagliano with a cautious lead from first. From the stretch, pitch to Julian. 6 8 right handed, and ball four, he loses him. And now McGraw is in trouble. He's walked two in a row with one out. One more hitter walk will fatigue him as Dal Maxville steps in. He's still only allowed two hits in the ball game, for God's sakes. He's going to face him. Selma and Ryman are ready. Here's the pitch to Maxwell. 5-3 to the right-hander. That's trouble. That's a homer. How It's not, however. It's a W. That's going to be a two-star single for Dal Maxville. Gagliano in to score, and we're tied up again, and McGraw's fatigued. Javier in to third. And here comes Westrom. That'll be it for a tug. Oh, man, what a shame. He only allowed three hits. Right-hander, pitcher, lefty, righty, righty. They're going to go to Ryban in this spot. Both Selma and Ryban appeared in this game in real life. The only ones not available, Stallard not available for St. Louis, and uh, Bernarth not available for the Mets. And welcome Franklin. He was cooking his, is it your birthday, Franklin? Cooking my birthday meal. Philly cheese steaks and fries. That's another good point, Rick. As well, if I were managing more current teams, I would be far more aggressive with the bullpens. Kind of respecting the era. They really weren't then. So as Ryband gets loose, let's total out McGraw. He winds up going six and a third. Only three hits allowed. Two runs so far. He walked three. Struck out six. A fine effort for McGraw. Unfortunately, he leaves with nothing to show for it. And righty Dennis Rybant will come on now. Nice card. Let's see what he's done in the replay. He's been in five games. He has two saves and a 1.17 ERA across seven and two-thirds inning. He's only allowed three hits so far. And Pat Corrales will be the hitter. Runners at the corners, one out now in a tie ball game in the seventh. The Mets will have to bring the infield in here. Let's check Maxville's stealing. I don't think he can steal. Not, not really. He's one of those 320 guys. 
So here's Corrales now with the infield in at a tie ball game. Corrales is 0 for 2 today. The pitch to Corrales. That's going to be a 3 8 right handed. He struck him out, and oh, what a huge strikeout that is with a man on third and less than two outs. And now the Cardinals have a similar dilemma. Washburn, a little bit better hitting pitcher. Of course, Washburn, unlike McGraw, has surrendered six hits. I'm thinking about this one. And thank you, Kenyon. Yeah, I don't know if it was the right move or not, but the way he was pitching, I wanted to see if he could do it. And I think some of you guys did too. Well, I'm going to say, you know, in fairness, I let McGraw hit. I'm going to let Washburn hit. Rybant with the pitch. 5-6 fly ball into center field. That's going to be Hickman. Puts it away. And if you're wondering, pinch hitter for St. Louis would have been Jerry Buchek, a right-handed batter. And on that roll, he would have done exactly the same thing. The Cardinals tie it up on a run on a single hit. They leave a pair. There were two walks in the inning. We're going to the eighth in a 2-2 tie. Washburn now, having allowed a hit and a walk in the seventh, only needs two hits and or walks to tie her in the eighth. Horner's ready. It'll be Boyer, Crane, Poole, and Lewis for the Mets here in the top of the eighth in what has turned out to be another great ball game. I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me. Hope you're enjoying it. Okay, here's Boyer, two for three today. Washburn gets the sign from Corrales now. The windup, the pitch to Boyer, a 6-7 right-handed grounder to second base X. That's Julian Javier, fine second baseman, a 2-E-15. As he ranges to his left, there's the play. That's going to be a six. He stabs it, throws him out. Nice play, Javier. 4-3-X, Boyer is retired. And here's Ed Cranepool now. Ed's 0 for 3 today. Washburn into the windup. Pitch to Cranepool. 1 8 right handed. Tapper to short. Maxville to Gagliano. Two down quickly. And that'll bring up Johnny Lewis. 1 for 2 with a walk. Lewis, a little pop against righties. Although he has no home runs yet on the season, just two runs batted in. Washburn gets the sign now. Here's the windup. Pitch to Lewis, a 6-7 left-handed. Grounder to second base X. That's going to be Javier again. 2-E-15. Here's the play on a 12. That's the error rating. An 8 on a 15, he makes the play for the out. So two X plays to Julian Javier, a grounder to short, and it's a 1-2-3 inning for Washburn. Rybant will come out for the eighth. Top of the order for St. Louis. Lou Brock to start things off. He's one for three with a home run. I can assure you that is the last time we will see a pitcher allowed to hit in this ball game. Rybant ready now. The sign from Grody. Here's the pitch to Brock. 
That's a 2-5. Single to 12, but on a 16. Hiller diving stop up and throws him out. Nice play, Hiller. And here's AJ, 0 for 3. Ryban into the windup. The pitch to Alex Johnson is a 5-11 right-handed tapper down to second. Hiller again over to Cranepool. Two down. And it'll be up to Kurt Flood. One for three with a double. Ryban getting his sign. He's retired all four batters to face him so far. The windup. The pitch to Flood is a 2-6 right-handed. Double to one. That's going to be down for a single. So Flood with a two-out single. He's two for four today. Flood, a star 15 stealer. Excellent base runner. Let's check the battery. Right bat a minus two. Grody a minus one. So he'd be a 12 not held. So no need to hold him on as Charlie Smith comes to the plate. Smith 0 for 3. Struck out twice. So that was against Tug, of course. Ryband now working from the stretch. The pitch to Smith. That's going to be a 5-3 right-handed. Grounder to the pitcher X. Ryband a 40-15. And here's the roll on the play. On an 11, E rating. The roll of an 11 on a 15. He makes the play. How about that? 10 or a 12, he boots it. But on an 11, he makes the play and throws him out. That'll go 1-3-X, side retired. No runs a hit, one left. We're through eight innings in a 2-2 two -two tie. Who's going to blink? Hickman, McMillan, and Grody for the Mets in the ninth. If anybody gets on, we'll have a hitter for Rybant, who I failed to write in over here. There he is. We can close the book on McGraw. That's two runs, two earned. And here's Hickman to start things off. Hickman 0 for 2 with a walk. Washburn gets the sign. Here's the windup, the pitch to Jim Hickman. That's going to be a 2-8 right-handed. Struck him out right in the middle of his good column. How about that? It's the hat trick for Hickman, who whiffs for the third consecutive time. That'll bring up McMillan, 0 for 2 with a walk. Hell of a game by Washburn. I was focusing on McGraw's performance. Let's not forget about Ray Washburn. Into the windup. Mr. McMillan, that's going to be a 6 7 right handed grounder to second base X. Julian Javier once again. A 2 E15. On a 20, he's got it. Throws him out. So Javier has been busy on the X plays today. Two down, and here's Grody. Ron Hunt's grabbing a bat. Washburn into the windup. Here's to Grody, a 3-10. That's down for extra bases, and he damn near rolled the triple. 3-10, he's in with a stand-up double. And here comes Ron Hunt. Ron Hunt will bat for Ryband. Grody, not terrible for a catcher at 1 through 11, in running that is. Hunt a 288 average on the card. Let's see what he's done in the replay. Ron 
Right bant goes one and two thirds. Hunt on the replay leads the club in batting at 340. 17 for 50 with three runs batted in. Brody standing at second. Ron Hunt standing in from the right side. Washburn staring in now. Checks the runner. The pitch to Mr. Hit by pitch himself. 4-6 right-handed, and he walks him. Ball four. Oh, my. First and second two down. And can he do it again? Here's Chuck Hiller, two for four. Came through with the RBI single his last time up. One more hitter walk will fatigue Washburn. Horner is ready. And here's Hiller now. Washburn checks the runners. From the stretch, the pitch to Hiller. 1-8 right-handed. Tapper down to first. Gagliano has it. Takes it himself. And that will retire the side. No runs, a hit, two left on. You know, it's because of the Hiller making the last out, I'm going to leave Hunt in the game at second base. Where he's a 3E28. The pitcher will go in Hiller's spot. Got right handers coming up. Jack Fisher will get the call. He was also in this game. Fisher will go in this spot. That's Hiller's spot. He made the last out. I'd also like to get Hickman out of center field. Luplo's going to lead off. We're going to get Cleon into the game. I'm not sure why he wasn't starting, but he's going to come in now. Take over in center for Hickman. So Hickman's done. Sweeping changes for the Mets here. Cleon Jones will take over in center. 3E8 minus 1. And that'll do it. Here's Jack Fisher now. Fisher will work the bottom of the ninth, 3.68, starter reliever, although he did pitch in relief in this game in real life. On the replay, he's made four starts. He's 0-3 with a 7.36 across 22 innings of work. Washburn just barely stayed in the game in the top of the inning. Holy cow. Definitely Ben and Kenyon. Washburn's still alive at 85. That rhymes. And he probably still can't drive 55. <laughs> <laughs> Gagliano will lead it off for the Cardinals in the bottom of the ninth, facing Fisher. Still looking for his first hit of the season, but he's walked twice today. The Cardinals would take a walk. And good afternoon to Dave Little, and welcome, sir. You've come in in the ninth inning of the 2-2 tie. Here's Gagliano now. Fisher gets his sign from Grody. The wind up, the pitch. It's a 3-8 fly to center. 
Cleon Jones just inserted into the game, backing up a bit, and makes the catch for the out. And here's Julian Javier, 0 for 2 with a walk, but he certainly put on a display with the leather today. Fisher into the windup. Pitch to Javier, a 1-12. It's a high fly ball to deep left field. Luplo back on the track and makes the catch with room to spare. How about that? 112 homer to 7. The roll is a 16. It's just a loud out by Javier, and there's two away. And here's Dal Maxville, the shortstop. One for two. One out away from extra innings. Fisher into the windup now. Pitch to Maxville, 2-6. It's a triple to 5 on an 8. That's going to be still down for extra bases. Jones rounding it up as Maxville cruises into second with a 2-out double. And the crowd on to their feet now. The crowd all jacked up by that double, and here comes Corrales. I can't let Corrales bat here, can I? I mean, look at his card versus righties. Who was their other catcher? McCarver? Yeah, they're going to make a switch. Normally, I don't change out catchers, but I mean, you, come on. <laughs> That's not going to cut it. He only started because he was facing a lefty, McGraw. I'm assuming, of course. Tim McCarver will come on. And McCarver stands in for the left side, and they're going to give him four wide ones. They're not even going to mess with McCarver. They're going to force... Shane Dean's hand. His run doesn't mean shit anyway. And now the Cardinals will have to pinch hit for Washburn. So we'll see how that strategy pays off. Washburn, a masterful game, a nine inning performance. He allowed seven hits and two runs. Walked four. He didn't strike out too many, I don't think. One, two, four, five, more than I thought. Six. Okay, I take it back. And now the St. Louis needs a pinch hitter. And it was going to be Buchek before. It'll be Buchek now. Buchek, who started the year as the team's starting shortstop before E56. He lost the job to the much better fielding Maxville. He'll come off the bench here at bat with runners at first and second and two away in the bottom of the ninth. A 2-2 ball game. Now Grody out to the mound, going over some things with Fisher. He's got his little card out, looking over uh, Buchek's tendencies. Okay, they're in agreement. Grody back into the crouch. Fisher from the stretch. The pitch to Jerry Buchek is a 5-6 right-handed. That's going to be a base hit, two stars, and the ball game is over. Buchek comes off the bench with a game-winning single. Maxville in to score easily. And that's the ball game. Holy cow, let's look at it again. It's a 5-6, triple to 4. On a 16, it's a two-star single. Maxville scores easily, and that's the game. One in the bottom of the ninth. Cardinals 3, Mets 2 is the final. Pinch hit magic indeed, Dave.
So Washburn, despite being a pinch hit for, he ends up with the win. His first of the year, one and three, and I'm kind of happy for Washburn, actually, because with a card that good, he just hasn't seen the results so far, but boy, he sure pitched a dandy today. Fisher will take the loss. That makes Fisher 0 and 4. That's kind of a shame. <laughs> he deserves better. Fisher two thirds, two hits, the winning run, one walk, it was intentional. Ryban and his inning in two thirds, one hit, no runs, no walks, and a K. And there it is. Ben, you can all, always see the real score of the game right here. It was Cardinals 5, Mets 2. That was a hell of a game. I'm telling you, the strat gods are with me on these streams, guys. Most of these games managed to maintain their interest right to the end. Let's get the totals for you here. Cardinals wind up with three runs on just six hits. An errorless ball game. Neither team made an error. Mets two runs on seven hits. Spokane Chief, Chief Spokane Gary, player of the game. Any thoughts on that, gentlemen? Maybe Buchak for his game-winning hit. Oh, I'm sure, Jack. Oh, my goodness. Sixty-two through sixty-eight. So I don't know if you go back that far, Jack, but were you a Brooklyn Dodger fan before they left? Or a, or a New York Giant fan? For that matter, one of the two. Both National League clubs. Javier, yes, and have to reward Washburn. Yeah, I kind of think Washburn's performance trumps Buchek's one hit, even though it was a big one. Chief Spokane Gary player of the game, Washburn. Honorable mention to Buchek. Game winning single. Well, that's the game. Let's see what we got for tomorrow. Tomorrow will be the last game of the schedule on May 3rd. And that's going to be the Baltimore Orioles at the Washington Senators. Jim Palmer on the mound for the Orioles. Phil Ortega for the Senators. The Orioles, always a fun team to watch in 66. So please join me for that if you possibly can, of course. Rick, I do remember Throneberry. Yes, Marvelous Marv. And absolutely, Ben, Javier. How many X plays did he have? Let's take a look. He was in the middle of that double play. Four, three X, four, three X, Three X plays in the last two innings. Any one of those not made could have been game changing. What a ball game. Holy crap. I'm still soaking it in. Great game by Tug McGraw, too. Let's not forget that. He just ran out of gas. 
basically a five-inning pitcher at that point in his career. Probably why they made him a reliever, don't you think? Yes, sir. Holy cow. Well, I'm going to get out of here, guys. I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me this afternoon. It means a lot to me. It really does. I'm going to put the input the stats, make some lunch, set up tomorrow's game, and then figure out what I'm going to do. With that, I'll leave you. I want to wish you guys all a very pleasant evening. Thanks, guys. Take care.